Kerbala, we're walking. We hear Zainab talking. Ya Hussain, To your grave, we're flocking. On your door, we're knocking. Ya Hussain, Sayyidi Ya Abu Hassan, we are blessed to be in this holy city of yours. You have accepted us as your zuwar, Mawlai. We are following on your footsteps and going towards the city of liberation, of martyrdom, of freedom. Today is the 15th of November 2016 and we have just departed Najaf. We have given our last salam to Amir al muminin Sayyid Abu Hassan Imam Ali alayhi salam and we have departed with the group for Karbala. Brothers and sisters, it is right now uh, 10.30 p.m. at night. We are absolutely exhausted at the moment. Uh, we are here at poll number 217, so we did about 400 polls today. So uh, it's day two of the walk uh, of love uh, to Allah and Islam. Uh, alhamdulillah, you just see how many people there are. Every morning you wake up and you're so humbled to be here again. It's an honor to be here at uh, the Mawqib of the Zahra Trust, uh, serving the Zawar of Abba Abdullah Hussain as they are doing, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Day two has come to an end. Alhamdulillah went well. That happened for the love of Imam Hussain, but Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah went well. I'd have loved to go on to day three, but unfortunately I can't. So inshallah next year. Day three from the morning of the walk uh, from Najaf to Karbala, um, part of the medical uh, team here, and um, as you can see, we've been quite busy. Um, it's a case of uh, many people now have uh, pushed themselves uh, to a limit they didn't know they had, alhamdulillah, uh, through the love of Imam Sayyid and Islam, and uh, sometimes that brings its own difficulties and tests. And one of them is obviously. Uh, the aches and pains that we've been treating, uh, the various blisters that are occurring on people's feet, and the more they walk, uh, the more difficult uh, these things come. And, uh, we've been treating those. Some people are picking up infections, uh, some people are having small allergies, um, various different things going on. Some people are a little bit more unwell. Um, some of the camps we've served in have been uh, seen some very unwell people. We've actually had to call the ambulance for them to admit. The story of Imam Hussain and his family's martyrdom resonates within the hearts of his lovers. Due to the diversity of the people who accompanied Imam Hussain, there is a lesson in his martyrdom that every person, irrespective of their background, can relate to they can relate to the examples of utmost strength, humility, dedication and sacrifice that were demonstrated by all those who were present with the Imam at Karbala.
the wives and sisters of those who were martyred, the children, including the six-month-old baby of Imam al Hussein, and the martyrs themselves hold a legacy of their own that lives on 1,400 years later. My name is Shabir, I'm from South London, and uh, Alhamdulillah I'm here in, um, in between Karbala and Najaf doing the walk, obviously. So right now, obviously, uh, we're here in, uh, between Najaf and Karbala, somewhere where everybody wants to be, and Alhamdulillah I got the chance to be here. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, first time I came to Dujara was 2013. That was for Arba'in. Uh, that year I did the whole package, you know, the walk from Najaf to Karbala included. I also came back in 2014 for Arba'in, but I was unfortunately able to do the walk because I landed here the day before Arba'in. So I went straight to Karbala. So the first time I came here for um, Arba'in, I remember doing the walk. And uh, halfway through the walk, I got Wi-Fi somewhere, I can't remember where though. And I messaged, I had a message from my friend Abdullah. So I uh, remember messaging him saying, you have to come here. Something I, I knew him for quite not too long, but I did know him for a long time, and I got to know him really well. And I knew what kind of things he liked. And this is this atmosphere. Just looking around here, this atmosphere, he would love it. He's that really chilled person that would love to walk in his own time between Najaf to Karbala. He had a lot of love for the imams as well. So um, yeah, so the first time when I was walking, I remember WhatsApping him, saying, uh, "You have to come. You have to visit this place." And this was only a couple months before he passed away. And he replied to me saying, Inshallah, next year I get the chance to visit. So as soon as I got to Hazrat Abbas, I had a list of du'as from people and the, one of them was from my friend Abdullah Ali. And I made the du'a specifically, I remember saying, and I even remember when we went back to Najaf afterwards, I remember saying the same du'a to Imam Ali and Islam, that Inshallah my friend Abdullah, who he had luckily he had been to Syria before the time, uh, before all this problem started. But I remember making the du'a specifically saying that Inshallah my friend Abdullah, by next year he gets to visit the shrines of Imam Hassan. Uh, sorry, for Imam Hussain, Hazrat Abbas and Imam Ali um, uh, A couple months later, he did pass away. Uh, not a couple months, but he passed away, I think, six months after Arba'in. So I remember going at his uh, funeral and I just remember saying to him that, I made a dua that next year you'll get to visit the Imam. And, and then I remember saying to him that, they say, uh, uh, the hadith say that if, uh, if a dua comes from a true believer, if it comes with the true meaning, the true uh, meaning behind the dua, sometimes it's given to you in a, be a better response than what you asked for. And I only asked for him to come and visit the Imams over here on the earth. But within six months, not only did he visit the Imams on the earth, but he visited them in the heavens. I remember saying this to him at his funeral. And uh, this year I decided, uh, because, he, because I made this dua for him, and unfortunately he never got to experience it. Assalamu okay. alaikum. This is uh, day three of our walk from Najaf to Karbala. We're about 25 to 30 kilometers from the holy city of Karbala, inshallah, today we intend to get into Karbala around about Maghrib time, which is about 5.30, 6 o'clock uh, local time. And of course, we want to pay our respects to Abdullah, uh, sorry, Abu Fadl al Abbas first before we go to Imam Hussein. Because of the congestion inside Karbala at the moment, we may not be able to get too close to the shrine, but inshallah, we'll get as close as we can at least so that we can see the holy dome of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and pay our respects before we go back to the Holy Suicide bombs and terrorist attacks, especially within Shia majority areas, are nothing but common occurrences. The majority of the people serving the pilgrims may have somewhat been affected by such attacks, and yet this has never deterred them from coming to serve. Some save up what little they can and donate it via food or water on these days. Others who have nothing materialistic to offer give their time or provide services such as massages or foot rubs. During the 80 kilometer walk, there are many stations which, with each one offering something different to the previous one. There are people that have erected repair shops to fix buggies, prams and wheelchairs. 
Verse servants of Imam Hussein who eagerly await by the numbered poles along the route to take the elderly or the injured to the Imam on their wheelchairs. There are doctors offering medical treatment for those who need it free of charge. And there are those who even wipe the dust and polish the shoes of the visitors walking towards the end. So uh, we're on to our third day now. We've uh, reached the Pakistani Mokim at 10.86. It's been an amazing experience so far. Uh, just watching all the the wars that are traveling hundreds of kilometers away, and all the khadims of Imam Hussein that are uh, that are present and serving all the people. I mean, we've had the opportunity of witnessing people uh, cleaning your shoes, uh, giving you tissue paper, uh, giving you a massage, uh, from tea, from giving you a place to stay. I mean, it's been it's been incredible. It's 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 something that was so unexpected and all I can say is um, I only came myself I brought myself and I and I and I and I thought about how I could serve Imam Hussein what I did was when I got the opportunity I gave massage to people and the reason I thought about that is because walking uh, 30 kilometers without uh, taking any breaks and only having a little bit of water uh, uh, the, 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 the pain in my feet made me realize that if I'm going through this, I, I cannot imagine what all of these people, all, all the Zawar is going through. So I sat down and started giving people massages throughout the, throughout the day. I think that was, uh, that was one way I felt like I could return uh, or do something in the name of Imam Hussein. perspective people might think this is uh, you know this is quite onerous but actually there's many challenges that people do uh, from around the world marathons and walks and various sponsored things this is similar in terms of physical uh, uh, 
requirements. I would say this from a more of a spiritual perspective. To the non-Muslim, Islam is a religion that uh, is based on the hadith of the Prophet which says the story, the relation of the Prophet which he states clearly that I didn't come to spread Islam and make everyone a Muslim. I came to make, to perfect the morality of humanity. And this walk is the exact perfect place to do that. You will see etiquettes of people that will shock you. You will see behaviors and kindness that will make you think, what am I really like? Introspect deep and say, you know, I need to change. Uh, you will see a spectrum of people who are all behaving in different manners to help and serve you selflessly. And you'll realize that actually, I'm part of a global humanity and I need to really improve myself and my etiquette, my kindness towards my fellow man. And that is a, a message that transcends all religion uh, and is pertinent to everyone. And as a Muslim, and particularly if you're a Shia or a follower of the uh, Bayt al Islam, this is the best thing you can do to use as a training ground to, again, do the same things, reflect on morality and see where you are in all of this perspective. But also to remember that there is a beauty to walking the same steps of Dibu Zainab and Imam Sajjad And the walk together is a walk of unification for all of you to give your allegiance uh, to Imam Hussain who is Sayyid al-Shabaab al-Ahl al-Jannah. You know, the Prophet peace be upon him has said in all books and narrations that he is the leaders of the youth of paradise. So for us to give our allegiance and say we were there, we couldn't be there 1400 years ago, but we are here today struggling for a small amount to show you that we will be there for you at all times and until the end of time. My name is Irfan Bimji, I'm from Orlando. This is my first experience for the Arbain Walk and it has been a phenomenal experience so far. It has been a very spiritual journey looking at over 20 million people walk around going to one place, one man who sacrificed his life 1400 years ago. It's a revolution, it's a movement that's literally taking place and the whole world can watch it. You know, the spiritual upliftment you get on this journey, all your sins are wiped away as you make each and every walk. As you go through each and every pain, the test that comes through, it really helps you elevate your status. Now that you're making the journey to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, you're now going to him in this state where you're all dusty and you're all disheveled. You're going to him and telling him that I'm here for you, Ya Abdullah. I'm here to answer your call that you gave 1400 years ago. And I'm here to tell you that I'm here standing for you. It is now my turn to show up. Imam Mehdi is waiting and I'm here for him now. Inshallah, we'll keep coming every year, every year till the Imam reappears and we take this justice again. Our fifth Imam states in Kamil Ziyarat, Lo Ya'lam al Nas, Ma fi Ziyarat al Hussein. If only people knew the extent of the greatness of the ziyara of Hussein, they would have died due to that realization. The ziyara of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters, forgives the sins, increases the rizq, brings down the barakah from the heavens, makes the Prophet and the Ahl al Bayt. Pray for us, makes the Malaika perform istighfar, makes the angels greet the believers on the day of judgment. It is one that enables the human being to be raised to lofty statuses. The narration says, Man zar al Hussein ka man zar Allah fi arshih. Whomsoever visits Hussein, it is, it is as if they are visiting God the Almighty in his throne. Hussein, son of Ali, alayhi salam, captures the hearts of millions of people around the world. His legacy inspires Muslims and non-Muslims alike, with revolutionaries, writers and poets such as Mahatma Gandhi, Charles Dickens and Edward Gibbon, all in awe of the phenomena that is Hussein alayhi salam.
I remember when I first was in Karbala and uh, this, exact, this exact scenario happened. I was there and I remember looking around, it was the I had heard millions and millions of stories about when I reached, all my friends told me you're going to reach Karbala, it's going to be heartbreaking. Nothing describes how it really feels when you first reach to Karbala. And I remember the first thing I did is I looked around to, to you know, analyse the atmosphere if you can say. And uh, all the buildings were there, it was quite hard. It was honestly, to be very honest with you, I, I kind of had it a little bit hard to analyse. Because it it, all I could really see was the two beautiful golden domes. But around that, it was hard to see, especially when you're walking in from uh, Bab al-Qibla, uh, from, uh, from, the, from the front, you, it's hard to see the Qaymaga, it's hard to see the Tilla Zainabiya, it's hard to see all of this. But uh, what was really helpful, I remember, was uh, throughout the trip, obviously I had the people who was doing the ziyara with me explaining to me, this is what this happened, this is where this happened. But on top of that, there was a diagram on the wall, it was drawn like a map of, it shows Imam Hassan and Imam uh, Hazrat Abbas, Imam Hussain, and Hazrat Abbas salam's graves. And it shows around it and it has like the Khaimaga, the Tila Zainabiya. It has all of these marked out on this map. And that was really helpful. And after seeing that map, every time I'm in Karbala, I do close my eyes. And every time I close my eyes, especially the one that recalls to me the most is where the hand of Hazrat Abbas was uh, cut off. Every time I close my eyes, there, all the buildings vanish. And all I see is the sh uh, Hazrat Abbas, Imam Hussein, and the hands on the floor. And I see sun and I see no one. So the statement for the non-Muslims, I'll say to the non-Muslims that there's 20 plus million people that walk 80 kilometers or more between Najaf to Karbala from Imam Ali to Imam Hussain And you haven't heard about it or you don't know about it, learn about it. And for the Muslims, my message would be if you haven't visited the shrine of Imam Hussain and you ever have a dua and you haven't visited Hazrat Abbas go there and make your dua and if it's not accepted, then you can come back to it. the outskirts of the holy city of Karbala, we're about to go into the centre where the shrines of Imam Hussain and Abu Fadl is and I have here um, the Turab, the earth, holy earth of Karbala, it is uh, mustahab and tradition when you enter into Karbala to put some on yourself because Imam Hussain we have a hadith that tells us that we should enter into Karbala in a disheveled state. Unlike normally when we go and visit the Imma, it's supposed to have to do a ghusl and put on clean, clo clean clothes. But with Abba Abdullah, of course, because of the circumstances in which he was killed and massacred, uh, we go there in a disheveled state. To sim it symbolizes the state of our mind and our hearts as we enter. So I'm about just waiting for the brothers to come out from Salat al Jama'a and those We have arrived in Karbala 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 Labbaik Ya Hussain Labbaik Ya Hussain Golden Dome of Abul Fadl Abbas, Sayyidiya Abul Fadl, my master, O oh, loyal brother of Abba Abdullah, I swear by Allah, we are not worthy of being here. We have walked from the city of your father, Najaf al Ashraf. We have spent a few days coming towards this blessed city. Accept us as your visitors, accept us as your guests. Brothers and sisters, with your loudest of voices, as you see the dome of Abul Fad, greet this honorable man, the man of heroism and bravery, the man of altruism and sacrifice. Labbaik ya Abbas! Abbas goes without saying that the world's largest peaceful gathering 
being in a land of war and bloodshed may not be such an irony. When there is injustice, the lovers of Hussein alayhi salam seek justice through mentioning the name of Hussein. And when there is darkness in times of oppression, his lovers keep hope alive through remembering his sacrifices. So Alhamdulillah, we've been in Karbala about three days now. We are currently, this is the night of Arba'in. So as is the tradition, we have the privilege, Alhamdulillah, to enter into the shrine of Abu Abdullah and Hussein and Abu Fadil as a mokib. So we're now trying to get the group to go. It's uh, 11 o'clock. I anticipate we probably won't enter into the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam until maybe 3 o'clock. So we're trying to prepare everybody for the long wait. Alhamdulillah, it gave us a chance to reflect, to recite some Latmiya, to beat our chest in grief on this night. And inshallah, we pray that uh, our Ahmad is accepted, inshallah. 1400 years ago, they stood a man who looked around and there was no one left. He looked towards his right and there was the bodies of Zuhair ibn al -Qayn. The body of Habib ibn Mudahir, the body of Abis, he looks to the left and he finds the mutilated body of Ali al Akbar, Qasim, Aoun and Muhammad. He looks across the Furat and there was the handless body of Abu al Fadl Abbas. Then he called out, Allah, Hal min Nasirin yansuruna. Allah, هل من مغيث يغيثنا؟ ألا هل من ذاب يذب عن حرم رسول الله؟ Is there anyone to help us? Is there anyone to respond to our call? Is there anyone who will protect the sanctity and the sacredness of the family of the Prophet Hussein? was not saying this for the people there. Aba Abdullah was asking you and I to respond, for generations to rise, for people to raise their voices in one collective body. Labbayk ya Hussein! Labbayk ya Hussein! Labbayk ya Hussein! This experience was unbelievable. It was, it, was, it was a completely different experience to my first one. The first one was very spiritual. But this, I, I was not prepared for this. It was, yes, I, I would say yes. I'm revitalized, I'm re-energized. I feel I've got a much clearer mind. I feel I have a bit more focus. I have energy and any other troubles I've come with have just been lifted. It's, I, I've been thinking about, I, I, I really have been thinking about it. What, what is it? But I, I can only think it is the love of the Ahlul Bayt that, 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 that kind of cleanses your soul to, to kind of take away you know, all the dirt that's there forgiveness of sins and, and just give you a clarity, a, a better clarity of mind, a better clarity of who you are and where, where you want to go. And then, and then you channel that energy to achieve your focuses, to achieve your, your purpose. I will do everything I can to do that. That is my one intention when I go back, is to be completely different, is to be more focused, is to be more serving, is to be, is to, is to try and follow the Ahlul Bayt the way the way the hadith tell us to follow and not be self-serving, not to be selfish, not to be looking at, at a capitalistic sort of view of the world, but to be a more generous, a more giving, a more, a better human being, basically. I, I think from the moment you start off in Najaf, I, you know, you, 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 you see the generosity, you see the spirituality in, in, in Karbala, in, in the holy shrines. You see the people walking, you know, uh, the elderly, the young, the disabled. You see the generosity of the people around you. You see everybody with one, one voice, you know, calling out, Labaik Ya Hussein, Labaik Ya Abbas. You know, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is mind blowing. It is, it is, it can't, you can't help but feel the energy. And then I think you use that energy to, to, to read, to, to, and, and, and you have that time also. I, I feel I don't have enough time in the UK 
you know, to contemplate, to reflect, to, 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 to look at the flaws in my life and try and find ways to correct them. And, and I think I've had that space to, to do that. I, I think it has to be action. It has to be action. I think if people see the difference it's made in me, inshallah, I hope, I hope it, you know, I, I pray to Allah that it has. But once they see that, I think it will inspire them. And I think, I think that, that, that's, that's how it goes. I, I've seen people who come here year after year after year. And, and to be honest, that's one of the reasons that I came as well. I've seen friends who I knew from a young age who were changed people, changed, completely changed. Um, and, and that was one of the, the motivators to come. And I can see why now. I can see the energy that they've used it in the correct way. And, and uh, inshallah, Allah gives me the, the tawfiq to be able to do the same. Do not see how I make from thy life. Do not see the arrow in my eye. Do not see how I make from thy life. From you I cannot bear here as I. Your shot, oh Abbas, Abu Fadl, Matam, Abu Fadl, Abu Fadl, Abu Fadl, Abu Fadl, Ya Abbas, give it my skinner, Ya Abbas, give it my skinner, Son of the one who hit him and called him Haida. I hear no sword and I ride like the thunder. When I ride into the field, the mines thunder. When I ride into the field, the mines. Uh, I swear by God that if you take my right hand, I will make sure my left will shake down this land. By God, your blood will pour level on this sand. Before the tears of Roka, I hit the ground. Before the tears of Roka, I hit the ground. Wallahi, in the bottom of your head, The Arba'in experience has been so beneficial towards me that I would definitely introduce uh, this uh, pilgrimage towards my non-Muslim friends to show them that, look, don't think it's just Hajj that we do. We have a very, very special world record-breaking, world record-breaking pilgrimage, the highest number of, uh, highest gathering in the world. I think it's something like 25, 30 million people in one spot for one purpose, and that is to, you know, come and pay the respects to Imam Hussein. If that isn't selling the package, I don't know what is. So from coming from, um, so, so walking and experiencing the mokibs and hospitality, uh, walking uh, with different types of people from all different walks of life in one direction for one purpose, simply for one man to pay your respects and to appreciate and acknowledge his sacrifice for mankind. I mean, if, if, if a non-Muslim can't understand that, then I don't understand where else would he go? Arwain has been such a beneficial experience for myself that I would definitely come back again next year if I could, if you know, if Allah wills and if Imam Hussein invites me, definitely I'll come back. Uh, reason being is that the whole experience, the whole hospitality, the whole struggle, the whole self-development of becoming a better human being and attaching yourself to Imam Hussein, um, that spirit of Imam Hussein to revive it, to energize it. You know, it's very important that we have that, and I'll definitely come back to experience the, you know, the walk again, to experience the mokib and hospitality again, to experience that whole, that yeah, yeah, saying, I'm here for you, I'm coming for you, that whole love, that whole, I've left everything behind, my friends, my family, uh, my work, I've come just for you, to come pay my respects on this blessed day of Arba'in. 
definitely I'll come back 100%. Oh, our master, our grandson of Hussein, our brother of the Prophet, our brother Abdullah al Hussein, we are your servants, we are your lovers and your Shia. We have come from different parts of the world. We were drops but became oceans in Karbala, determined and honored to pay allegiance and strengthen our connection. Ya Hussein, you are the savior of Islam. Because of you, we have faith. Due to your mesmerizing words and your eternal sacrifice, we continue the path of salvation. By Allah, we will never forget you and your family and your companions. And we pledge to be your ambassadors around the world, spreading your glorious teachings. We will never surrender or be defeated. Our hearts are Husseini, our tongues are Husseini, our voices are Husseini, our existence is Husseini. I'm crazy, say, say, I'm crazy, say, say, in your loving gifts the way you raise me, say, say. I'm on the day of Ashura, after the battle and after the shahada of Imam Hussain al-Islam, Omar ibn Saad, may Allah curse him, may Allah take all his blessings away from him, said to Zainab, what do you see? And she said, I see nothing but beauty. People never understood what she meant. How can a woman say, I see nothing but beauty, when all she sees is bodies and blood? But Zena wasn't talking about that day. Look at this, 25 million people. I'm from London. I live a luxurious life. I am happy and in love. I walk this and take every eventuality that will come. I will lose my shoes. I will stink. I will get covered in dust. And I don't want to go to Imam Hussein in any other way. I don't want to go to him perfumed and looking like a man in a suit. But this is the beauty that Bibi Zainab was saying, I see nothing but beauty. When you look out your hotel room or when you go out in the street and you have to walk at a pace of a turtle where it will take you an hour to cover 10 meters because there's millions of people and you're just one of those millions. You're, we have no value. We have no value except that we become part of those millions and millions and millions and we become part of that word that Bibi Zainab said, we become part of that beauty.
thing I think is when you come here, yes, you cry, you remember the musibah, but I think that Imams want us to take away their methods, their message, their legacy, which is to try to behave and change our akhlaq. The, the phrase of islah, of reform, the reformation starts from within, I think. And that's Imam Hussain's message, and that's why it never dies, because we must always reform. Karbala gives us the boost, now we have to think, how am I going to bring that back? And, and the main thing for myself is to internally reform, inshallah. Try to improve my akhlaq, try to win every small Yazidi battle that comes, so I'm more Husseini, inshallah. And then afterwards, of course, you must tell people about Ziyara because Ziyara is the best institution. There's nothing better than coming for Ziyara. No holidays will give you this energy. No medicine will cure you like the Aima al Islam. No happy joke, no fun story, no amazing day will be like the happiness you feel when you see the feet, when you lie at the feet of Abba Abdullah al Islam and you talk to him, and the one you love the most, and he's right there with you. I think the story of Imam Hussein al Islam is the biggest catalyst one can have in their life. Imam Hussein al Islam is the transformation that everybody needs. Why do I say that? Because he is the ultimate stand of good against evil. He is the ultimate stand for every time you have the choice to do something that's easy and wrong or something that's hard but is the correct thing. He gives you that strength because there is no difficulty that we face that he didn't face much greater. And yet the hardest thing that we face, he faced and, the, and yet the hardest things he faced, he still overcame with goodness, with the correct behavior. At a time like this, when there are many mixed messages in the world, many different people are made to become heroes when they haven't really achieved much. The celebrity culture, the concept of, of uh, fads, these ideas of people popping up and only because they happen to look a certain way, dress a certain way, uh, do certain things, they get popularity and we assume popularity means their role models. No. Imam Hussein Islam is that universal role model. He does He's not affected by time or place. They come and go, but he always remains. 1400 years and still people are more and more coming. Why? Because they want to soak up his spirituality. They want to give their affirmation to say, Labaik, I'm here and I'm going to reform myself and my society to be better, to be better individuals. In the society we live in today, we need a role model who is that transformatory person. And there is no better role model uh, than Imam Hussein. It is here, just here where you are, that the arms of Abu al-Fuqb al-Abbas were severed and his eyes were penetrated by the arrow. It is here that he fell. He called out, As-salamu alayka akhi ya Aba Abdullah, alayka minni salam. It is here that he did not wish to go back because he remembered the first of Ruqiyya Sakina. It is here that he wanted to be buried. It is here that we honor him and we recall his sacrifice and we recall his altruism. Wallah, his moments in Karbala will forever be remembered and our blood and our thoughts are Husseini and Abbasi. Lebeik ya Abbas! Lebeik ya Abbas! Lebeik ya Abbas! Hussein's principles and his love for God and humanity stands as the biggest testimony to the dedication people have in honoring this great man's name. And so the saying goes, let humanity awaken and every person will claim Hussein to be their own. The 40th stands as a proof that the legacy of those who are slain in the way of God truly never die. The 40th is proof that even through death, Hussein, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his grandfather, the Holy Prophet, lives on. Being so beautiful, I couldn't imagine it being so emotional. I couldn't imagine it being so moving, you know. 
this is something this is something that you're gonna remember for the rest of our lives, inshallah. Yeah,